ever pondered the question, what if everything you perceive as reality is nothing more than a dream of your higher self? A dream so vivid, so immersive, that every sight, sound, touch, and taste feels as real as the air you breathe. As we delve into the depths of existence, we stumble upon a mind-bending idea. Our world might just be a creation of our higher self, a self that operates on a plane of consciousness far beyond our everyday understanding. This higher self, some believe, could be the true author of our reality. It weaves together the tapestry of our lives, the grand narratives, the fleeting moments, the joys and sorrows, all from the threads of its vast consciousness. But here's the twist. The matter that composes us, the very building blocks of our existence, is nearly all empty space. Imagine that the solidity we associate with our bodies, our world, is 99.9% .9 nothingness. So what are we then? Are we barely even real? If our existence is almost entirely void, it begs the question, what fills that void? Could it be that what we perceive as empty space is in fact brimming with something far more profound? Perhaps it is filled with the consciousness of our higher self. This consciousness, invisible yet omnipresent, could be the unseen fabric that binds our reality together. It could be the hidden force that animates the inanimate, that breathes life into the lifeless. This idea aligns intriguingly with the revelations of near-death experiencers. They speak of a reality where all matter is conscious, where existence is everlasting, and where we are part of a cosmic self-correcting system. Does this mean that our conscious self is the essence of our physical existence? Are we, in essence, consciousness embodied in a dream woven by our higher self? What if the so-called matter could simply be the consciousness of our higher self? A thought-provoking question that challenges our understanding of reality and compels us to look inward into the boundless expanse of our own consciousness. Imagine this, a person on the brink of death, caught between the realms of life and the unknown, experiences something profound. Let's consider a man. We'll call him John. He's in a hospital bed, his heart flutters uncertainly, the beeping of the machines around him a cold and distant sound. He's teetering on the edge of life, a precarious balance between the world he knows and a realm he can't comprehend. Suddenly, there's a sensation, a feeling of being lifted, of being transported away from the sterile hospital room. He's floating, weightless, like a feather caught in a breeze. It's an odd sensation, one that's both terrifying and oddly calming. He feels a sense of detachment, like he's not just leaving his body, but also leaving behind all the worries, the fears, the regrets that had once seemed so important. He finds himself in a space that's neither dark nor light, a place that defies the laws of physics as we understand them. He's not alone. There's a presence, an entity, something beyond his comprehension. It's not threatening, but rather it's comforting, like a warm blanket on a cold night. John feels a connection, a bond with this entity. It's as if he's known it all his life, yet he's meeting it for the first time. He realizes that this entity, this presence, is his higher self. It's the part of him that exists beyond the physical realm, the part that dreams up his reality, that shapes his existence. He's not just meeting his higher self, he's becoming one with it. Visions start to play out like a movie reel in his mind. He sees his life, not just as he lived it, but from a different perspective. He sees his actions, his choices, not as isolated incidents, but as part of a larger tapestry. He understands now that every decision, every action, every thought was not just his own but also a part of the grand design dreamt up by his higher self. He feels a sense of peace, a sense of understanding. He realizes that he's not just a physical being but a consciousness, an energy that's part of a larger system. He understands that he's not just a speck of dust in the universe but a vital part of it. John feels a profound sense of love, of unity. He realizes that he's connected to everything, to every person, every creature, every star in the sky. He understands that he's not separate, but interconnected. He's not just a part of the universe, the universe is a part of him. As John begins to return to his body, he carries with him a deep understanding, a profound truth. He understands that he's more than just his physical body, that he's an integral part of a self-correcting, everlasting system. He understands that he, like all matter, is conscious because consciousness is what matter is made of. In this liminal space, they learn that we are a self-correcting system, everlasting. What if every speck of matter in the universe was conscious, because consciousness is what matter is made of? Now let's take a journey into the realm of conscious matter. Imagine an existence 
where every atom, every particle, every speck of dust in the cosmos holds consciousness within it. This isn't just a wild hypothesis, but a concept that's been presented by many who've experienced the inexplicable phenomenon of a near-death experience. These individuals recount a profound understanding that all matter is conscious, a realization that completely alters their perception of life and the universe. Picture a universe where the stars, the planets, even the emptiness of space are conscious entities. And we, as beings composed of this very matter, could be a manifestation of this cosmic consciousness. This leads us to an intriguing possibility. Could our matter, our physical existence, be the consciousness of our higher self? Are we, in essence, the universe experiencing itself through the lens of human existence? This idea might seem far-fetched, but when you consider that we are made of the same stuff as the stars and galaxies, it starts to make a bit more sense. Could it be that our higher self, a transcendent, omnipresent entity, is manifesting as the matter we see, touch, and feel? Could it be orchestrating our experiences, our thoughts, and our feelings? If so, this would mean that we are not just in the universe, but we are the universe, a self-correcting system that's forever evolving and learning from itself. This concept of conscious matter resonates with the Buddhist notion of interconnectedness, the idea that we are all part of a vast, intricate web of existence. It echoes the teachings of quantum physics that suggest at the smallest scales, particles can be entangled, influencing each other instantaneously across vast distances. So if all matter is conscious and we are made of this conscious matter, then we are, in essence, conscious beings living in a conscious universe. Thus, the universe in its entirety could be a vast interconnected web of conscious matter. So if our reality is nothing more than a dream of our higher self, what does that make us? It's a provocative question, isn't it? If we are indeed the creation of our higher self, a dream within a dream, then our existence takes on a new dimension of complexity. We become the created and the creator, the dream and the dreamer, the observer and the observed. This concept of existence is not as alien as it may appear at first glance. We often create worlds and characters in our dreams, don't we? But in those fleeting moments of slumber, we are both the architect of the dream and an active participant within it. Could our reality be a similar construct, a dream of a higher, more enlightened version of ourselves? This possibility leads us to the concept of self-awareness. Are we aware of our existence as a dream of our higher self? Is our consciousness a reflection of this awareness? Or is it, in fact, the consciousness of our higher self experiencing itself through the dream that is us? Think of it this way. When we dream, we are not consciously aware that we are dreaming, yet upon waking, we can recall the dream and know it for what it was. Could our reality be a similar state of existence? Are we living in a dream unaware of our higher self, only to awaken to the truth upon transcending this physical reality? And what about the matter we are made of, which is 99.9% .9 empty space? Could this empty space be the consciousness of our higher self, permeating our existence, guiding us, experiencing itself through us? If we are indeed a dream, a creation of our higher self, then we are not just passive observers of our life, we are active participants, shaping our reality with every thought, every decision, every action. Could we then, in fact, be the dreamers and the dreamed, existing simultaneously in a universe of our own design? These are mind-bending concepts, aren't they? Concepts that challenge our understanding of reality. We've delved into the existential question of our existence, pondering the wonder that we are mostly empty space. It's like gazing into an abyss and finding ourselves staring back. We've discussed the fascinating accounts of near-death experiences, reports that suggest our consciousness not only continues, but thrives beyond our physical shell. We've contemplated the idea of conscious matter, the possibility that everything around us, everything we are, is simply consciousness. This notion aligns with the experiences of those who've peered beyond the veil of life, suggesting that we are indeed a self-correcting system everlasting in nature. Finally, we've explored the concept of our higher self, the idea that our reality, our world, could be a dream dreamt up by a greater consciousness. So, the next time you find yourself gazing at the stars, remember, you might just be looking at the conscious matter of your higher self's dream.